Welcome back to another Mellow Monday stream. We're continuing on with uh, our painting of the Marvel United figures. Uh, so yeah, hope everyone's been doing well. I've uh, been looking forward to this for, you know, for the whole week. <laughs> uh, but yeah, uh, so last time we had worked on Spider-Gwen, aka Ghost Spider, aka uh, Spider-Woman. Um, so yeah, we were working on that last time. Hang on, I'm just adjusting some of my equipment real quick because my microphone was coming in a tad hot. I work on, I work on getting this stuff prepped beforehand and I still end up having to do adjustments <laughs> when the stream starts, but yeah, so we were working on uh, Spider-Gwen last time um, and we got that finished up and I'm pretty happy with the results on it. Let me uh, actually just zoom in here and get a better close-up shot of how the figure ended up coming out. Yeah, overall, pretty happy with how it came out. Like, a lot of the detail work on the bricks came through real nice. Um, yeah, the shading work didn't come out too, too bad on the hood and all that. And yeah, overall, pretty happy with it. I'll, I also uh, went through and did an actual uh, wash on the rocks uh, to get the um, the gaps between the rocks to show up a little bit better. I think overall it came out pretty good. 
And I especially like how the slippers came out. The slippers actually came out pretty good for me doing that detail work without um, without any uh, bumps to work off of for where the paint was going to go. So it was basically just freehand kind of stuff, but I think it came out pretty good. Pretty happy with it. So that is what we worked on last time. Let me zoom out again. That way we can have a good uh, open shot uh, for when we actually go to work on this. But yeah, so that is what we worked on last time. And uh, this week, we are going to be working on Venom. And uh, so we worked on a Venom figure previously. Uh, that was the hero version of the figure. This one is the villain version because they uh, made a separate figure for uh, both the hero and villain version. Um, they have since changed this in the Marvel United X-Men sets. Um, so in the Marvel United X-Men sets, instead of having a hero figure and a villain figure representing the same character, they um, made... So they have hero figures, which are blue. They have villain figures, which are red, which matches up with how it was in the regular Marvel United set. Uh, but in the Marvel X-Men, or Marvel United X-Men sets, um, they uh, made it so that they have three different color figures. They have blue, hero, red, villain, and purple, which is anti-hero, which uh, can function as both a hero and a villain figure, depending on... Um, how you want to play it and all that. Um, so yeah, so they had, in the original set, they had a separate figure for Venom, uh, depending on if you were playing him hero or villain. Um, since we already painted the Venom figure for the hero one, uh, we're going to be working on the villain one this time around. And uh, just to kind of like separate it a little bit, uh, my plan for this one is instead of doing just a general Venom paint job, uh, I was thinking that it would be kind of nice to differentiate it a little bit outside of, you know, the way I've been doing hero and villain figures is I, on the edge of the base, I always do blue or red, depending on if they're hero or villain. Um, so aside from the little strip on the base to indicate the uh, status of hero or villain, I decided that for this one, I'm going to go and do a uh, alternate paint job for this one. So it's not going to be much of a change, uh, but just to kind of go with a different feel for this one, I'm going to make this one the uh, Mac Gargan version of Venom. So the change is very, very subtle. Uh, essentially, Mac Gargan's uh, version of Venom has little human eyes kind of like in the middle of the big venom eyes that are on the figure um so it, it's a very slight difference um but i figured it would be something that would at least give the figure a little bit more differentiation from the hero figure version granted uh both figures are different. Like they did a, they did actually a, a good job of making the figures, you know, in a different pose, um, look different, that kind of thing. So, uh, but I feel like the little extra touch will at least give it kind of some variety to uh, how the figures look. So it's a very subtle difference, but it's a difference that I feel will actually help the figure out. So yeah, so I need to get the, hang on a sec, I'm bringing up my keyboard and mouse for this. Uh, let me get the reference picture I'm gonna be working off of up here. So there we go. That is the one that we're gonna be doing for this. So if you notice, he's got, the costume is basically the same, but he's got the little human eyes kind of in the middle of the big white area that are usually Venom's eyes. Um, I've seen it done a few ways. I've seen white eyes. Um, the less, the one that I see less is red eyes, but that's the one I'm gonna go with um, because the red will actually like stand out from uh, how 
<laughs> the, the red will actually stand out from the rest of the white of the eye area. So that's what we're going to do. Um, and what I will probably end up doing is I'll do like a little... I'm going to try to do... We'll see if this works, but I'm going to try to do a little bit of a, a shading exercise on that. We're basically... We'll do the big white area on it. We'll do a red spot for the eyes that are inset on that. And then I'm going to uh, mix down a uh, like a very, 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 very light red. It's going to be basically like mostly white with a little hint of red in there. It's going to be pink, obviously, but it's going to be a mostly blown out red um, that I will use to paint in the center of the eyes. That way it kind of gives it like a little bit of a glow kind of thing. Like you've got a, you know, hot red or a hot white center to the eye. So we'll see how that ends up working out. Uh, and then aside from that, we've got, you know, all the rest of the stuff that is pretty standard on Venom. Black suits, white spider symbol on it. Uh, we've got the tongue, which I actually forgot to grab some pink for that but we'll just mix our own pink because I've got both white and red here, so we can end up making that work. Um, and then we've got stuff on the base. It's a lot of metal work, so I've actually got a few paints uh, picked out for doing the metal stuff. So actually, while I've got this out, let me get the paint list showing up. There we go. Uh, you know what? That's going to be on the painting palette real quick, so let me... Shift that down a little bit. There we go. That should work a little bit better. All right, cool. So let me get the keyboard moved off to the side for right now, and we'll uh, get started. So first things first, we've got a lot of black area to cover, so I think we're just going to start on that. So we'll go through do our coats of black on this and get that all set and then we can work on the other stuff after. So, there we go. It's getting a little hard to open that. Okay, let's get some black paint out of this and into the palettes. We're going to need quite a bit for this because there is a lot of surface area to cover on Venom that is black, so. Probably go for quite a bit of paint on this just so that we don't have to go and mix another set after this. So let's get that put down there. And with that amount of paint, so let's go with a couple drops of water. Just to thin it out a tad more. There we go. There we go. That's is looking pretty good. All right, cool. So, let's see, brush-wise, eh, this might work. Oh, you know what I forgot? I will be right back. I forgot to go get a paper towel. Let me go get that. Sorry about that. As much prep work as I do for this, I always seem to forget to uh, grab something or other. This stream it was... I forgot to grab pink for the tongue, and I also forgot to grab a paper towel. So, let's see. Yeah, you know what? We're not doing... I'm not going for, like, pinpoint accuracy on the... Uh, paint job for this part, so we can use this. This is a little bit spread, but it should work fine for getting the face painted, or for getting the 
skin painted on this because we're not going for super duper pinpoint accuracy on all this. This is just gonna be a real quick coverage uh, just to get things going for this. Plus with the amount of area that we're covering, if we were doing a small brush, it was gonna take a very, very long time. So let's just go with getting this nice and covered for a base coat. So yeah, I hope everyone's been doing well out there. Uh, happy Labor Day to folks in the U.S. who uh, celebrate Labor Day on, on this day. Um, obviously not the case in most of, well, I, I say obviously. I'm sure it's not obvious to people in the U.S., but... Um, this is not the day that most people celebrate Labor Day in most parts of the world. Um, but that's because they wanted to separate that out from <clears throat> what happened during all the uh, labor uprisings in the U.S. So, anyway, don't want to dwell on that. But needless to say, <clears throat> excuse me, um, needless to say, a lot of, a lot of work went into giving people more workers' rights, and that should definitely be celebrated regardless of which Labor Day people celebrate wherever they're at. But yeah. Um, that is what today is, and, um, just to go into my usual spiel that I do when I'm doing these streams, it seems like it's tradition at this point, my continuing journey of going through all of the MCU TV show stuff, um, we are... So I was, I'm currently working my way through Jessica Jones season two. And it's been pretty good so far. I've been enjoying it. It's uh, been a tad surprising. Like um, I've gotten to a point where there was quite a reveal. Um, about, I think, halfway through the season so far. And there was quite the, like I said, quite the reveal that came up um, during an episode, and they did a flashback episode to kind of show what was happening prior to that reveal. So that was fun. Um, but yeah, it's been a it's been a pretty good show. Like I'm not sure I would say it was it's. I uh, you know it, it's one of those things where it's kind of hard to really outdo the first season. Um, it's really hard to pull that off in in anything really. Like I'm not coming down on Jessica Jones like. Um, any, any show generally has a hard time kind of doing better than what came before it. Um, that is not universal, obviously, like, uh, season one of Star Trek The Next Generation is such a good example of of the opposite where uh i like season one but it is probably the weakest season of of the show so 
obviously not a universal rule. Um, but yeah, like, season one of Jessica Jones was just so strong that it's really hard to kind of do better than than that kind of thing. Um, like, they had just a great villain in in uh, Kilgrave. Uh, David Tennant really knocked it knocked it out of the park with that one. Definitely did not get enough primer on some areas of this. Paint isn't sticking so well. But yeah, so like it's it's hard to it's hard to do better than the first season for Jessica Jones just because the villain was so perfect for it. Um, both just being genuinely horrifying and being a very personal character for for Jessica, so. fun with it. Um, it's been a nice break from watching more um, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Season 5, which I am on hiatus from simply because of the fact that uh, because Jessica Jones released on Netflix, that meant that it was the whole season in one shot as opposed to it being weekly uh, like Disney is now doing for all their stuff so with it being all at once it's like okay well chronologically this is all happening before the rest of the season 5 of Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. happens which I'm fine with like Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. is okay um, it's this season's been kind of entertaining, but it's also a situation of, eh, like, it, it's it's a it's a show of very, uh, I wouldn't say high peaks. It's got you know some decent story in it, but. It definitely fluctuates from episode to episode whether or not the story is super enthralling or if I'm just going, okay, well, let me do something else while I'm watching this, you know? If the show keeps my attention enough that I don't go on my phone and look at Twitter, then that's a pretty good indicator that the story is keeping me, you know, enthralled with what's going on on the screen. And Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. kind of goes back and forth for me on that, so I'm mostly aware of what's going on. A lot. Well, I, I know what's going on in the show, but whether or not I'm glancing down at my phone every now and then is a different story. <laughs> But yeah, so at this point, I am... Oh god, I, I've got to look back. I don't remember how many episodes deep I am right now, but I think I've got a little over 100 episodes left for Marvel stuff right now. So this is stuff that... <clears throat> Excuse me. This is stuff that I have watched, uh, or sorry, this is stuff that I have not watched that is part of the MCU uh, TV show-wise. So, 
that list will both go down and go up simply because of the fact that um, every week that goes by they are airing, you know, like at this point in time it's another episode of She-Hulk, uh, which I have not watched yet, so please no spoilers on that. Um, but it's, you know, that number will steadily go down, but at the same time I'm also fighting against time because... <laughs> they will keep making more and more uh, Marvel TV shows, so. Constantly going through and trying to do catch-up work on that. That said, getting way more done on that than trying to go through and watch the Arrowverse stuff good lord I looked at that list of stuff and it's just like I started season 2 of Arrow and that show is rough to get through and then looking at how much I have left it's just like I I don't know that I will be able to catch up with this because there's just too many too many things that tie into it and I don't particularly have the motivation to go through that because, ugh, like, my complaints about the Arrowverse stuff, like, granted, I've only seen Arrow so far, so this might be different for the other, uh, the other Arrowverse stuff, but at least Arrow itself is very, um, I've said it before to my partner, but Arrow is very um, CW, which, you know, it aired on CW, so that makes sense, but it's a situation of... CW has a very um, definite style for a lot of their shows. They're very um, relationship drama heavy and stuff like that like, who's hooking up with who, and it's just like, uh, I don't especially care about that kind of stuff, so it makes it a little bit harder for me to get through the show. And at least with Arrow, good God, the amount of flashbacks that there are is just like, okay, yep, yeah, we're going back to the island again, and we're going back to the island again, and hey, let's flash back to the island again. And it's just like, okay, how long was he on this island? Because I feel like at some point in time, we're going to catch up to the point in time where he finally leaves the island. <laughs> it's just like, hey, yeah, yeah, there's too much going on. that needs to be black and I'm already running out of paint for this. Might have to mix some more. And this is still just the first coat. Just trying to get coverage and I'm already running out of paint. <laughs> Definitely some areas on here that didn't uh, 
get enough primer because a lot of this isn't holding. There's a lot, because the tentacles kind of go everywhere. Hang on. I need to mix in some more paint. So let's do that real quick. Give this a shake real quick. Get it all mixed up before I decide to throw it into the thing and then everything's just kind of separating out. Granted, these pigments don't really separate out that much. It's when you get into like the metallics and stuff like that. Those ones will separate out quite a bit. some more of this. I'm not super low, but it's getting to the point where I might need to go and buy some more. There we go. brush a rinse while I get this mixed because I think I'm getting a lot of paint sticking to the brush at this point too which doesn't help so also um, I am happy to say that I have completely moved off of Streamlabs OBS at this point on um, on the laptop I use for doing my painting streams, I have finally gotten everything converted into uh, OBS Studio, which it doesn't take much because it's got a nice, easy way of importing the settings and all that, but it more came down to I need to get uh, different plugins installed and stuff like that, and that w was the other kind of big part of doing um, the switch to OBS Studio was uh, Streamlabs OBS does not support plugins. Um, so had that and that was the impetus for getting, well, I mean, aside from Streamlabs not being super great as far as their treatment of the Streamlabs or as part of the their treatment of the OBS people. So there's that part of it, but uh, I use a lot of different plugins on my desktop system for doing uh, OBS stuff, uh, mostly coming down to the head animation, which I have not set up on this yet. I'm sorry, I will do that at some point in time. It was not the priority uh, this time around for... <laughs> getting the conversion over I just wanted to like get things working um, and that was the main thing for me was just getting the regular you know overlays and stuff moved over and working and stuff like that um, but one thing I did go through and get set up uh, on this system because I have not had it 
Um, because there's no easy way of getting it set up through Streamlabs OBS is I got the closed captioning plugin added for OBS so that way much like my Tuesday streams um, I wanted to make sure that I had closed captioning support so that is currently set up and it should be working on the stream hopefully if it does not end up working, please let me know. Um, it's one of those things where I always want to make sure that all the bits and pieces of the stream are working for you, and sometimes it's very difficult for me to actually do that, especially while I'm streaming. So it's kind of hard to go through and make sure that stuff is just working, you know? heavy. Let's throw in a couple drops. Maybe that will thin it out enough. Because this is kind of going on a tad heavy. And while it's doing a lot of coverage, it's also kind of globbing on and I don't want that to happen because I don't want to lose all the fine detail work that they put in on the mini. Okay, that looks a little bit more what I'm looking for. There we go. Because if you thin it out enough too, it, it does a lot of work of needing less brush strokes to get it everywhere. I do like how I'm using the non-flat version of black for this. I'm using the glossy version, which, you know, to each their own. Um, there's, there's definitely times when I will use... Um, I generally try to use, like, flat because glossy tends to go on a bit. It doesn't look realistic in most cases. And granted, we're not going for realism on these figures. They're, they're Marvel. They're comic book stuff. They're not supposed to look hyper-realistic. But, um, yeah, so I will generally opt for using flat paints. Um with a few exceptions. Um, it really depends on what I'm looking for on the figure. And in the case of Venom, Venom is a symbiote. He looks very wet and greasy and stuff like that. And so a gloss works super well for that kind of thing. So... And that is why I'm going with the non-flat versions for this paint job because I want Venom to look very wet, um, as he should. Like, he's covered in this alien symbiote that should look wet, you know? He should look shiny. That's going to be a tough part to get under the arm here. Yeah, I kind of filled it in. We've got to get underneath these fingers here, too. This is why we're going just like 
kind of really messy on the uh, on the paint here because we really need to try to fill in all these gaps and that is a little tough to do when you're trying to do like detail work and stuff like that you might as well just go super over overboard on coverage and then go through after and do all of your fine detail work so it's looking pretty good so far we're just going to hit the head a little bit more in a few of the other areas yeah, i'm just going to do all of that just give it a lot of coverage make sure we hit all of these little areas get them fully covered Oh, so outside of the general Marvel stuff that I've been doing, um, I think I've mentioned before on stream that I've been trying to learn how to play Guilty Gear Strive and fighting games in general, and that continues to go well, I think. I'm feeling comfortable enough that I'd like to try streaming some of my progress. Mostly, like, streaming my progress through the uh, dojo missions. Because I am currently situated in the... Um, currently situated in um, the four-star dojo missions in Strive, and the dojo missions are essentially like the tutorial. So, um, it's been going well. Uh, I've started going through and actually doing like some computer battles just to try to work on the stuff that I've learned so far and try to really hammer in those concepts um, also been checking out some beginner tutorial videos on uh, on YouTube for Strive um, because like I've played you know like Smash Brothers and stuff like that, but Smash Brothers is like a whole different beast as far as like it's a fighting game, right? Um, and I'm not especially good at Smash anyway. Like I'm, I'm, I can hold my own against, you know, kind of beginner to mid-range people in that game, but like I don't do <laughs> any of the tournament level kind of mechanics that I would need to like do to get by in that kind of setting and I'm fine with that I I like Smash for what I do in it and I don't need to I don't feel the need to go through and do the tournament level kind of effort in that But, um, yeah, so. You know, I know how to play Smash to a certain extent. Um, it's enough for me to get through, like, the single player stuff and be semi competent against regular players and that kind of thing. 
but with Strive, it's, you know, it's kind of a full-fledged fighting game. Well, not kind of, it is. Um, so it's been learning the mechanics of Strive and then kind of peppering in tutorial videos for general, like, fighting game techniques. Because, like, I didn't really know anything as far as, you know, like, parts of the game that really matter, like fighting games, like, you know, when you've got your neutral, your offense, and your defense, and, like, all of that was kind of new concepts to me, so learning how to deal with that and how to read people and how to really use all the concepts that I'm learning mechanic-wise in Strive and matching that up with how you actually play a fighting game. So that's been the process I've been going through on that and it's been going pretty well so far. This is not really holding too well. Let's see if I can try to get this a bit more and hold it in place and maybe the paint will actually stick and dry on it. So some parts of this figure that just do not want to hold paint and that's mostly down to the fact that the uh, primer didn't hit everywhere, so. glossy I wanted Venom to look, so. Ooh, okay. Well, let's hold this here for a bit just to get the paint to dry a tad. We need to go through and do some touch-up work. We can do that with a uh, detail brush after. There we go. Can go off to the side to dry. Alright. Let's take a quick look. Ooh, there's a few spots under the chin that I missed. And that's kind of to be expected. Like, it's a spot that is very hard to hit with a big brush. Super well on the camera, it's it's tough, like doing a top-down perspective and there's a lot of model to hit or a lot of model to block that view, you know. to show through. Okay. God. Yeah, there's a lot of spots underneath the uh, chin that I just did not see. on the hand that didn't quite get enough paint. 
paint. Like the fingers are tough. Like there's enough of a curl to his fingers that it's really hard to get all the spots on them. go through and hit up like all of this too, just to make sure. There shouldn't be any spots that do not have coverage. There we go, that's looking a little bit better. Excuse me. Apparently, my allergy meds are kind of tapering off. But I'm not too bad at the moment. Could be much worse. that I can hear her over the uh, music I have playing. <laughs> I'm guessing it doesn't pick up on the mic, though. Okay. Well, let's give that a chance to dry a bit. I am really liking how shiny it is. Uh, that looks really, really good, I think. So, while that is drying, let's take a look at what we need next. So, um, <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, you know what? I'm gonna go grab something real quick to make it so I'm handling the figure less. I'll be right back. my helping hands to try to hold this that way I'm minimizing how much I'm handling the figure because part of the problem doing this is I'm kind of like pulling paint off with my fingers accidentally I think I got most of the spots covered. Eh, that's kind of missing right there. Let me do this real quick. See if I can get this. There's like some spots right here that don't quite have any paint on them.
think. Yep, that looks like I got it. All right, so now we're just trying to decide what to do next. So I think. What do I think? I think I am going to turn down the mic a tad because I'm still flipping. There we go. Um, I think that we are going to do the mouth and tongue next. So let's take a look at this real quick. Um, you know what? I am going to go grab a pink just so I don't have to try to mix a pink. So. Uh, we'll be right back once again, sorry. There we go. All right, so I went and grabbed some, uh, there we go, X17 pink. I'm gonna use that for the tongue and the uh, inside of the mouth as well. Just hit up all of that area. But yeah, so, like I was saying before, I've been uh, enjoying my time learning Guilty Gear Strive and fighting games in general. It's been a fun learning experience. It, it, it feels good to move beyond just mashing buttons in fighting games, because um, that's basically how I've always kind of played them. Outside of, again, Smash Brothers, but even Smash Brothers, like... I, I know some basic strategies and stuff like that, but... I'm also probably not playing that game optimally. I feel like I spam a lot of attacks. A lot of the same attacks over and over, so... It's getting used to not just doing the same thing over and over some time. Let's see if we can get the inside of the mouth first. Might not need to do a whole lot here because the primer really didn't get inside the mouth all that much anyway. A little tough to do with the helping hands. God. They made, like, it's a very nice design on the figure. It's gonna stick that well though, because not a lot of primer gets into there. It's a little bit hard when I'm doing a spray can primer, so. so far on the tongue. Keeping nice and filled in. 
And then, let's so get that all covered. Go through, wait for this to dry a bit. thing angled enough so I can actually get the paint in there. You know, I wasn't so worried about Space Shipbreaker, because that is a very chill soundtrack. I did used to I did play that for a Mellow Monday at one point in time too. A very good game. It's covering up a little bit more. some black paint on it. Right there. It's got 
It's still showing through a little bit. Let's see if we can get a little bit more on there. There we go. There we go. That's not looking too bad. All right, so let's get that to uh, sit there. All right, um, let's mix some paint here. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna continue using this pink, but we're gonna mix in some white and do some highlighting. here on, on doing the pink, so we might as well get some highlighting done while the while we still have some pink paint to go around. How's it going? Oh, it's super low latency, only one second delay. Yeah, I am currently rigged up to, um, I'm currently rigged up to a Thunderbolt dock so that I can actually have gigabits ethernet going to my laptop. So hopefully that should make things way better for you this time around. Hope you've been well. realize that the chat box is very 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 tiny on stream I'm gonna try to adjust that so that is showing up a little bit better That would certainly uh, make a difference. That's good to know, though. Uh, is that the that's the job doing the um, AI training for the search engine stuff? Seems less like time off and more like I won't meet the quota during this time, though. I'm gonna have to work on the days you mark, but you can if you want. Well, that's cool. That's, that's a nice little thing to have, at least. Like, not, not feeling like you need to work simply because of the fact that you have, like, run out of time that you can take off and stuff like that. It's nice to not have that 
hanging over you, you know? Zoom in a bit, see if that will help show up a little bit better on stream. Kinda, it's kinda getting blown out by the light, unfortunately. But... I'm glad things have been working out for you. And so you were sick? You feeling better now, at least? I got a nice paycheck since my sign-on bonus finally arrived, so I bought a new cheap graphics tablet to play it. Oh, nice! Very cool. Okay, keep hitting that. Yeah, not sure why I felt sick, but it was just a feel-down kind, not many... Okay. Well, that's good. I'm glad. I'm glad you're uh, feeling better after that. It's uh, it's rough. Like even if it's just the I'm feeling run down kind of thing, like it's still, it still makes a difference in in how you're, you know, able to do stuff that kind of thing. So. too bad. Alright, so we got that. Oh, come on, focus please. Hang on, I'm gonna see if I can reset the auto focus on. There it goes. Um, yeah, I sat looking at work and had zero motivation, so I googled how to take time off. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah, I've definitely had days like that before. Um, either just feeling run down or, um, yeah, motivation certainly is a thing that will hit you hard <laughs> some days. Um, and uh, there's been days where I've just, like, looked at the screen and I cannot, like, I, I can read, but I'm not comprehending anything, if that makes any sense. Um, just some really tough times trying to get by at work sometimes. And it's going to fix that checkbox because it's still not quite right. I don't remember if I told you all well, my student loans got wiped. Awesome! Awesome! I am so glad to hear that. That's got to feel really good, not having that kind of stuff hanging over your head. Especially, it helps that you're you're not feeling like you need to uh, work your butt off just to be able to, you know, keep up with the loans and stuff like that. It's awesome. I'm glad. Oh yeah, it was only 3k for me, so way less than most people. But it takes a ton of restrictions off, like six month grace period, so I can take breaks from college. Like, want to know that's awesome yeah it it's it's definitely you know it changes things a lot when you don't have debt hanging over your head I'm 
makes life way different. Like, I haven't had to deal with, with much just because I, you know, decent job kind of thing, but even, you know, when I, like, got a new car and stuff like that, it was like, all right, well, this is something that I don't want to have to deal with, you know, loan-wise, so let me get this paid off as soon as possible. So it's like, hey, you know, put in more than I need to while I know I have the money just so I can get it paid off as soon as possible and not have that constantly hanging over my head. I'm sure it's going to tank my credit score with the loans. My average credit history is 2.1 years without limits, four months. Eesh. Yeah, well... Credit scores are BS anyway. It sucks that we use them, but um, yeah, like I've had, you know, I've had credit for going on over 10 years at this point, you know, dating back to, oh God, probably even about 15 years. And it's just like, I've got all that credit history and my credit score is still not the best it could be. And it's just like, why? What do I have to do to get better credit? Because, listen, like, <laughs> pay all my stuff on time, don't generally carry debt, and that's the problem is right there, is that I don't generally carry debt. So, <laughs> I hate the credit scores. Judge me based on whether I make payments to you or not, not whether I have three credit cards. Exactly. It's ridiculous that we have that system, and it's not even that old either, like, it's just abhorrent that we have that whole system in place. But we still have to play into it, because if we don't, then we don't really have a way of having the ability to improve our financial situation. Handsome State literally has started including a system similar to China's social credit scores. Oh god. That's rough. Um, I hope that's not the case, because yikes. <laughs> Good. I think I'm going to add a little bit more red to this. I'm trying to get this a little bit darker. Oh, another random news. I have gotten very into Code Vein lately. How is it? I, I own it. I have not played it yet. Um, but it looks like a very fun Souls-like, so... And it's very anime from what I've seen. sure I will get around to it eventually. Um, maybe it'll be on a stream. Who knows? We'll see. But it, it's been on my backlog for a very long time at this point. Um, because I cannot help myself and I end up buying stuff even if I don't have time for it. So, Got the deluxe edition for $15 a few days ago. Already level 89. Jeez. Been trying to co-op with people, but the game is fairly dead. Oh, that's disappointing. Yeah, that is the trouble with the online stuff, too, is just like, eh, once you get past the... Usually about the first year, you get a lot of drop-off.
Unless you have like a really, really, really dedicated fan base. Usually you get like pretty immediately, pretty immediate drop off after the first year. Or pretty intense drop off, I should say. Co-op is super nice, so you can change your settings to where no matter where you are, it will summon you anywhere in the game you've been before to help. That's awesome. That's a nice little feature. Also, instead of arbitrarily scaling your stats now, when you use a password to summon, now it just scales you up to within 10 levels of the host regardless when you summon. So summons are always balanced. Nice! means multiplayer is not level locked, so a level 800 can summon for a level 10 effortlessly, become a level 20, not have to worry about being in range to be summoned. Nice! Sounds like a pretty fun little game. I'm gonna have to, uh, actually get it downloaded and, and uh, load it up at some point in time. I wonder how the Steam Deck support is on it. I'm guessing it's probably pretty good. Might be able to get it loaded up on that and get some uh, progress into it. God, it's hard trying to get this onto the camera. You on PC or PS4? I am on PC. Just check code vein is platinum on Proton DB and verified on Steam Deck. Nice. Well, that's perfect. I will. Uh, I will have to see if I can get that loaded up then and uh, get some progress in it. you know. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, you know, like, basically since it came out, I've, I was like, that looks pretty decent. And I heard that it's, uh, it's had more forgiving than some of the Souls, Souls-like games. So that's, uh, a nice thing because as much as I love the Souls-like games, there is a certain level of um, can I just play this without <laughs> needing to be perfect at it? <laughs> so. I'm trying to summon a few hundred times to get titles from multiplayer. All cosmetic bonuses, like any title you get, a logo beside your name. Oh, that's cool. style of game. 
Like, I, I enjoy Souls-like games, but it, there is there is a point in time where I, ha I feel like I'm getting beaten down too much kind of thing. <laughs> so, having the ability to grind is kind of nice. Uh, doesn't stop players from endlessly dying to a certain boss at some point. <laughs> well, there's always going to be a thing that, uh, just can't quite seem to even having all the bonuses you can get. Yoshi fighting that boss at level 16. <laughs> Did not go well. Summon like five times, brute forcing it since it kept pulling me to his world. Oof. Well, did you eventually beat him? Hopefully, you did. Poison's the worst. It's making me flash back to uh, Blight Town in uh, the first Dark Souls. Fun game, but that area, oh boy. Least favorite area. I'm gonna try hitting on this real quick with pink. Try to Give him some gums. because they'll be coming out of gums instead of just being a pure white blob that uh, the teeth are popping out of. There we go. Well, all, you know, poison boss aside, the game does sound pretty fun. I'm definitely going to have to give it a shot at some point. Figure out some way of fitting it into uh, the games I'm playing. Because <laughs> right now, I am currently going through... Well, aside from Gravity Rush 2, um, I am also currently working on uh, Guilty Gear Strive. Um, just, whoops, just learning, more learning how to play fighting games with Guilty Gear Strive rather than kind of, you know, playing Strive proper. I'm sure I will get to the point in time where I'm at least semi-competent at the game, but that is not yet. <laughs> uh, but yeah, playing that, um, 
I started to dip back into Monster Hunter Rise a little bit too. Although, I just tried to play Rise on my Steam Deck today, uh, which I haven't done before. Played a little bit on the computer. I mostly played on the Switch when the Switch version came out a while back. But, um, bought it on the PC so I could do some streaming of it. And it's like, you know what? Let me try loading this up on the Steam Deck. And it ran up until I got up to the monster I was going to fight. And then the monster screamed at me and it screamed so hard that the game froze. <laughs> it's like, oh no. Well, I'll have to give that another shot at some point in time, but that was a, a little bit of a, a rough rough first go on this on the Steam Deck. Can't get into Monster Hunter Rise and like worlds just in pull oh okay. Well fair enough. Um it was the opposite for me. Um I tried Rise uh, at one point in time, or sorry, I tried World at one point in time, and it just didn't hook me enough to really keep up with it, aside from also not really kind of knowing what I was doing. Rise was at least a little bit more of a situation of it kind of eased me into it a little bit easier than World did, and so I stuck with it because of that. That and um, some of the quality of life stuff in, in Rise was uh, super nice to have compared to Worlds. So like collecting stuff and not having to track the monster was really nice too. Um, to me, Rise feels like it just doesn't have enough meaningful story for it to matter. World gave me the story, but most people hated it because of that. Eh, like, yeah, I mean, Rise, or sorry, World definitely had a lot more story than Rise. I will, I will absolutely agree to that. Um, I can understand people not really wanting there to be a ton of story, but eh, I guess to each their own. Like, if you enjoyed World more, that is more power to you. The, the open more open world aspect of world was very nice I will say that from from that perspective I mean they do give story but it's in text boxes with no voices while world likes to give voice cutscenes yeah Yeah, yeah, I, I, I hear you there. Um, some games are definitely better at hitting that movie aspect than others. And World kind of seemed to do much better in that category. And if you really want a movie in your game, that's when you go to play any of the Hideo Kojima games. Because then it's mostly movie with some game thrown in. <laughs> that is not me hating on Kojima, though. Don't, don't think that. Like, I legit enjoy Kojima's games. But the cutscenes are long enough that the controller will typically shut off during a <laughs> during a cutscene in a Kojima game because you're not doing anything.
God, that is reminding me I need to get back to uh, playing Death Stranding at some point in time. I was enjoying that game. But, much like everything else, it kind of fell off for me. But I do need to go back and play it some more. Norman Reedus Simulator, exactly. Yeah, for me, um, I really enjoyed the game um, from the, like, just the gameplay standpoint was, like, perfect for me because it was like a hiking simulator almost, and I really liked that aspect of it. Granted, later on it becomes more of a, here we're going to build road simulator, but, um, I really, really liked hiking around, like the manual task of hiking in that game it was really fun to me. Okay, that's looking pretty good. Look the eyes kind of dry a bit. I'm gonna work on the emblems. Oh god, I feel like I need some glasses to work on this. My eyes are terrible. But yeah, I really enjoyed Death Stranding from the hiking simulator aspect of it. Like, it was very fun to me realize the absurd amount of packages I have coming in the mail. <laughs> Went on a splurge, did you? It's always nice to have packages come in. I feel like I'm, you know, whenever I have stuff coming in, it's like, ooh. I get to go out of the house temporarily just to go pick something up. It's, it's nice. We watched Torador for the second time and got just a little obsessed. <laughs> I have not seen that before. Uh, what? What is the general premise of of the of the anime? Slice of life romantic comedy. Oh, okay, cool. watched a ton of anime, but I definitely have some that I enjoy quite a bit. Always meaning to watch more, but the schedule just does not line up most of the time. Very rushed ending because they made the final two episodes before the actual novel of the anime was... Oh, yeah. That is the case in a lot of... <laughs> In a lot of animes, though, they decide to make the anime before the thing is finished, and it's just like, okay, guess we'll do that and see where it goes. 
and then things don't end up lining up. Uh, like, um, Full Metal Alchemist is, is one of those. I suppose at least with with those ones that they at least try to do something different and not do like too many filler episodes because that's kind of one of the worst things is i think i haven't watched it so i could be wrong but i've heard that dragon ball was very much a uh, a lot of filler episodes while they were catching up to the source material or while the source material is catching up, I should say. Still reading the novel before I work on the manga. Oh, sorry, I missed a thing. So I decided to consume all of the content here. Anime, novel, manga, even the obscure forgotten PSP game. But the anime itself was extremely wound up with the novel just slightly out of door in the video format. Just the last episode was different. The only difference in a few removed scenes in the ending. Oh, okay. Yeah, and I mean, I mean, I'm not inherently against changing stuff either. Like, if it's a good change, then perfectly fine moving off of the source material. Um, it's 25 episodes, so not too long, barely filler. 26 to provide the Blu-ray version or require it, yeah. See, that's, that's like my perfect length of an anime right there, like... A lot of the stuff I watch is in that sweet spot of 26 episodes. Um, the ongoing stuff I just never quite got into. Like, it, it's just too much for me. I say this while I'm currently watching through all the MCU stuff in my spare time. My copious, copious spare time. <laughs> but, um... Yeah, like 26 episodes for an anime is like the perfect length for me. Uh, it's one of those scalper situations, though. Oh, are you talking for the Blu ray? Like the cost of the Blu ray? spinning this whole thing around just so I can get access to this figure a little bit better. It's not quite holding on to the base as much as I would like. There we go. around and see if I can get at the connection for this. God. I'm trying to get like the right angle and stuff for actually getting at this is a little difficult. Here we go. Oh, it didn't send that one to chat. Uh, which I, I guess I don't know what message it's talking about. 
Oh, here we go. I'm surprised that I actually woke up in time to catch the stream for once, too. Oh, that is very weird. I don't know why it skipped through it. Just Twitch being Twitch, I guess. Well, I'm glad you were able to to join me, because, yeah, it's always nice seeing you catching up. Oh, God, don't fall off, figure. Stay on the thing. There we go. Alright, I think I got most of the emblem. Yeah, that's pretty well covered. Got pretty much all of it. And I don't want to fill it in much more than that. same for long anime as 20 to 5 to 35 episodes and then I'm done yep yeah I tend to I tend to gravitate towards towards the the single run animes um, it's because I, I I feel like they they do just the, the right amount of story form and that kind of thing um, at a certain point you have to end it or else at 2k episodes the ending really doesn't matter yeah yeah um again I, i've heard <laughs> uh dragon ball stuff gets a little it's a little long in the tooth um running for that long kind of thing okay let's see um, you know what? I'm gonna see if some of this paint is still wet enough. Looks like it is. Let's see if we can get some eyes created for him. Like, how do you run a show that long without just repeating the content? Like, surely by episode 50 you've done all the things. Well, you would think that. But, <laughs> I granted different different kind of material but um simpsons is uh the perfect example of just running for way too long and while they don't really end up repeating material for simpsons it's just they've they've gone for too long and the, it's no longer good anymore kind of thing gets to be just like you know I, I hate to go back to this again but yeah Simpsons is the perfect example of it's been just on too long and they've been trying to continue it and it just is not fun anymore kind of thing like um, Simpsons once I got up to you know like I got up to like eh, kind of started to drop off after, after about the, like the 10th season <laughs> and they're still going so uh, episode 19 of Toradora is me memed as the episode that makes people depressed in a good way <laughs> oh fun well something to look forward to Uh, I'll have to see. I don't know if I don't know that it's it's my sh kind of show, but I will certainly 
see if it's, uh, if it's something I might be into. shows that um, have hit me really, really hard sometimes. Um, not in a bad way. Like, I, they're genuinely good, but it's, it's one of those things where it's just like, man, like, now I'm going to be a mess for a bit. Like, um, Cowboy Bebop is a great example of that where um, towards the end of that show I think it's like the second or third to last episode uh, of that just hit me really really hard and um, and yeah it's um even going back and just listening to the soundtrack of Cowboy Bebop, there's a couple songs in there that as soon as the song comes on, it's like, oh god, the tears are starting up now. <laughs> and, um... Wolf's Rain. The ending of Wolf's Rain. Good god, I was bawling at the end of that show. Toradora has good soundtrack. The intros are also really good. That's awesome. Yeah, I mean, it's anime. Like, I, I would be surprised if the intro was was bad. <laughs> they have really good intros generally. So, mm, yeah. I may touch up the eyes later. It's not quite exactly what I was hoping for for the eyes. I may see if I can fix that. There's a couple spots on the upper eye part that I need to actually fill in though, because it's not quite a... It's a few spots that I missed. Whoops. See if I can get the light just right so I can see. There we go. Like that, and then there should be like a little curl that I'm just not seeing because I can't get the light just right on it. There we go. Let's see if I can get that on camera. There we go little spots like that. I uh, haven't watched very many at all on my minimalist account, my anime list account. It says I've watched 2.1 days worth of anime and 129 episodes total, including my rewatch of Toradora. Only eight animes watched. Uh, what other ones have you watched? Uh, I, I'm... I don't know that I've, I've watched them. Like, I've watched very few animes at this point, but um, always looking for other stuff that I can that I can dig my teeth into. Because, um, like, I've watched Cowboy Bebop, um, the original 
Full Metal Alchemist. I still need to watch through Brotherhood. Um, I've watched Wolf's Reign, uh, Planetes, which Planetes was amazing. Absolutely loved that one. Um, Trigun. Like I've watched some of the more popular stuff is really what it comes down to. I also watched the first season of Attack on Titan, but not any of the other seasons since then. I've heard it's gotten very uh, bashy towards the end of towards the end of it. So, um, Macross Frontier, Miss Kobayashi's Dragon Maid, in season two, the same name, Open S, Ramo, the Pet Girl of Sakurasu. series of Torador. Cool! I forgot to exclude Torador's OVAs and stuff. I've only watched six. Five if you consider Kobayashi's season one and two. The same even though they have different names. Ah, gotcha. Alright, so. At this point, I think... all sets like I'll still go through and do like a lot of um, touch up work and stuff like that but overall the model is mostly done so I'm just gonna do the base and we'll do some detail work after that all right so turn this around I'm gonna go consume some food woke up like an hour ago well enjoy your food food is important too too much so I think that might be enough paint I'll just thin it out a tad Connect this now. So let's see if I can do this without completely destroying all the work that I just did. Oh my God, 
honestly. Like, I'm gonna be going through and doing a lot of painting over all of this brown anyway, because there's a lot more metal than there is dirt on this. <clears throat> like down here so here's what we're gonna do we're gonna do we're gonna do this big like door thing up here first so <clears throat> we'll use our metallic gray for doing the door it's gonna mix. <laughs> that's the thing with metallics Separates super duper easy. Need to like constantly mix them. That's also why, like, this is probably good enough. Um, because it's metallics and you don't really want to. Add water, me water to metallics because they will um, just separate more. So I'm just gonna leave it like this. Just give it a nice mix to get it to hopefully not look separated when we're painting it. Jiggling a little bit. I think my dog is 
bumping up against the uh, table I have it uh, connected to. to give this paint a mix again. It's kind of already separating out. This without the rocks too much, although it doesn't really matter because we're actually going to go through with the. Uh, we're actually going to go through after with the gray to get the rocks done underneath the door. So it's not super duper needed, but I always like not doing too many layers on top of the things that I'm painting, so... I was gonna say my dog finally decided to lay back down. She must have decided that she did enough of bumping into the table where my mic is. How was your uh, breakfast slash dinner slash meal of this hour? <laughs> Um, I was wanting 
to use my Prime sub on some channels since I have through my student trial, but the student trial specifically only gets one sub and then the other Prime benefits only for another two months. It's good, just random Mexican foods. Random Mexican foods are awesome though. Mexican foods, I mean, it's, it's hard to go wrong. They're very, very tasty. Yeah, I gotta remember on the Prime sub thing, like you were saying, I gotta remember to actually, like, use my Prime sub. I keep forgetting. Just have the recurring sub on several channels, so I always forget to, like, when I'm hopping in on other people's streams, to, like, use it. You should definitely use it, because otherwise it's just free money for Bezos, and... <laughs> I'm gonna get Twitch Turbo once the trial runs out, if I get it to me. Twitch Turbo is greater than Prime. Yeah, I remember you uh, talking about it a little bit before. Um, I forget what the difference ended up being. For me, the, the Prime thing is just kind of incidental because I have Amazon Prime, so... Yeah, like, like I said, for me, the Prime thing is just kind of incidental because it's just like, uh, I have it for Amazon Prime, so I just kind of get it because of that, so you only get muted colors without Prime Turbo, but you can use vibrant ones with, ah, okay, I set mine to purple and then I forgot all about it. <laughs> I'm really simple when it comes to colors. I just like, eh, if it's got purple, I'll set it to purple. Twitch ad block broke again for a few days, but the devs fixed it up again. Now it runs at 30 or 360p during ads. When running at 480p during ads, they added in a commercial break screen under the ad. Ah. Now well, at least you're still able to get around it some way. It is always going to be an arms race, though. Like, there's just... For every every time that... Every time that the uh, ad blockers figure out a way to get around it, Twitch will figure out a way to get around that, and then it'll just keep going back and forth. Like most things with uh, that type of stuff. It, it's, like I said, it's literally just an arms race on going back and forth and figuring out who can do what. And Even if we couldn't, it still limits us to only 30 seconds without it. You can get up to five 30-second ads in a row. Yikes! That's rough. Little 
table things back here in Chrome. streamers are watching ads on websites just give me static images not videos if you give me videos don't disturb the content especially yeah if you can't rewind agreed yeah like video ads are real rough um like i understand why they do them but i hate them with a passion Particularly because the ad will typically also not be the same volume level as whatever it is I'm watching, and that will cause some problems. initiative, but it's a scam to the companies. They end up taking like 50% of the ad profits for the ones that don't filter out bigger companies, those bigger profits taken too. Yeah. Yeah. I understand why Adblock Plus does it, because they are like an actual company at this point, and they need to make money somehow. But yeah. There we go. Covered up the silver. Just need to put in a little bit of black paint. Ad nauseum looks good in theory, it clicks the ads and removes them, so bulk money is acquired and tracking is hard because if you click every ad, they can't build a profile, but it's flawed since it can be easily detected. Ah, okay. That is a good idea, though, on a having it go through and just click the ads for you that way. People that have the ads at least get the cash off of the click. It's one of the things that I feel bad about with ad blockers, but at the same time it's just like, uh, kind of factor in my own ease of use into part of the decision for it too, so. because nearly all ad blockers use it. Well, that's cool. Yeah, generally, like, this is just because I'm stuck in my ways. <laughs> um, I just have ad block plus installed um, because I'm old, and that's what I've been using since ad blockers became a thing, so... But 
this cool, I may have to make the switch off. I haven't seen ads in a very long time because between um, Adblock Plus and I also use NoScript for doing all the JavaScript blocking and stuff like that. Um, it's been a while since I've seen ads, <laughs> so. But that being said, uh, no script definitely makes my life a little bit harder because of needing to whitelist uh, specific domains for JavaScript and all that. Like AdGuard more than uBlock Origin, especially because I can invert the block list only block ads when I enable it per site. Oh, okay. this up again. uBlock Origin has a nice JavaScript blocking mode. You can quickly enable or disable per site with a hotkey or extension menu. It either blocks all scripts or none, so it's nice for sites that don't need JS. It happens for the entire domain. Oh, okay. may have to look into that. Maybe uh, a little bit simpler to use than uh, than um, God, I'm already blanking on what I use. Um, no script. Might be easier to use than no script because no script is nice, but I will definitely run across sites where they have so many different domains that they're loading stuff in from that it takes me a very long time to find which ones I need to enable to make the site work. Um, granted, I also know the most popular tracker sites out there now because of the amount of time I have to go through and enable and disable stuff, so... Blocking JS can also get around some major news outlet paywalls as well, because apparently they just don't paywall without the JS. I don't trust no script at all. It's fair enough. Like I, I use it a lot just because it was one of the first things that was out there as far as like being able to, or at least the one that I was able to find the easiest that would do. Uh, domain level JavaScript blocking, so and that is why I ended up using it. And once again, because I started using it, that's basically all I use at this point. 2016, the NoScript dev automatically whitelisted known malware scripts that he used, as well as whitelisting his own site that he used with malware. He has changed his ways, though, or so he says. I didn't know that. <laughs> That's good to know. Um, I didn't know about any of that. I also don't keep up with uh, that kind of stuff, so it doesn't surprise me that I missed out on all of that, but that's good to know. Um, that really sucks. Alright, so taking a look at this. Hmm. Let's grab metallic brown. And do this thing that looks like a... Kind of like a beam under here. Like it kind of looks like an eye beam. It's hard to see. Um, there we go. 
Yeah, there's like kind of an I-beam thing right here. I'm gonna do uh, metallic brown on that. Here we go. I don't trust them not to try something again. If you distribute malware at one point, you don't just stop that once money hits. Yeah, agreed. Well, that's good to know. I may have to uh, switch up what uh, what tools I use because I did not know about that. So. color going on here but says it's metallic brown so we'll call it metallic brown God, I don't know if this is gonna actually show up on camera too well cuz I there's so much figure in the way and I still need to be able to see what I'm painting but we'll see just apologize in advance if this doesn't show up well on the stream At least on far from yeah yeah mm, even still like knowing about the malware history that gives me some pause and maybe reconsideration of what I'm using. Because again, like you said, um, it's hard to believe that you kind of turn back from doing the malware thing. I'm, I'm happy to see people grow and change, but it, it takes a lot of, a lot to get that level of trust back after that kind of situation. So many privacy tools have some controversy about them that's wonky. Yeah. Well, that's the space that they deal in, though, so. Again, like, it also, you know, is the is the situation with Adblock Plus, where, you know, they have the, they whitelist certain sites that pay them, and it's like, yeah, you know, I understand... I understand from a financial standpoint that, yeah, you've got people you need to pay. Because, again, like, they're an actual company, so they got to make money somehow. But um, it also kind of puts a damper on that level of trust that you give them to. It's like, well... When you suddenly decide that, uh, hey, this company is paying us enough money that we're going to whitelist them. It's like, eh, yeah. The brave CEO is homophobic. DuckDuckGo CEO made the names database, which was literally a place to aggregate user data crowdsourced. Oh, God. I didn't know about the DuckDuckGo thing either. Like, their whole thing is supposed to be privacy and geez, that's um that's real bad from that side of things. Also, have not used Brave, but good to know that the CEO is homophobic, so I can just completely disregard that. <laughs> Names database was a site where you could put in all the info you could about people you know to aggregate and like it be certain. Yeah, no, that's not cool. <laughs> hmm. I'm 
think, you know what, let's do metallic blue for a couple of these little spots down here. spots down here on the door. to know uh, something I can just completely avoid at this point because yeah uh, screw that that's um not something I ever want to have to deal with oh specifically what got him booted off was they tried to promote him to an official position came to light that he donated 1k in California to being same-sex marriage. Okay, well, very much screw him then. Uh, Jesus. It blows my mind that some people cannot leave people alone. It's like, come on. It doesn't affect you in any way. Why do you need to go after these people? trans people and just like just let them live their life like it doesn't matter to you just don't get it like even at a very low level if you disagree with it it doesn't affect you at all so just ignore it exactly But they will continue to mask it, usually through, well, it's against my religion. It's like, okay, well, you don't have to participate in it. <laughs> uh, there's no reason at all to be against it, even if someone disagrees. Exactly. Exactly. Again, it doesn't affect you. You can just leave people alone. at all and it's just it, it blows my mind that they will just not let it go but everyone's gotta be involved in everything apparently so again mostly coming down to they're just trying to enforce their religious or political views on others and it's just like you know you don't have to you could just like go live your life <laughs> Exactly, exactly, has no place in the law. <laughs> like, it's, it just blows my mind that there are some people out there that, you know, will just completely go down the path of, well, it's against my religion, so 
no one gets to do it. And it's just like, no, that's not how it works. like it's consistently a thing and it's mostly just like they're using the religion religious angle to give cover for their bigotry so they also tend to be the people that complain about you know sharia law and all that and it's just like eh, this is what you're trying to do so events and gatherings, but as a trade-off, it keeps out of the government. Exactly. It's the way it should be, but um, they want to make it a Christian theocracy. Well, again, like, not... Again, they're kind of using that as a, as a shield, right? They're using their religion... They're really using the religious argument as a shield for their just bigotry that they have so they don't really care what their religion has to say about it they're just using that as a cover for what they're doing so. when I only kept up with politics being my family. I was super conservative and homophobic, but 2018 and so above, I started doing my own research and looking up all the sources, and I was like, wait, this is stupid. Pretty much did a 180. Good! Glad to hear it. Yeah, it's, um... Like, I've always been fairly progressive, but, you know, there was even some stuff that just, like, you know, I looked at it and was like, you know, I, I believe in this, and then it's just like, you know, come, you know, looking at it afterwards, it's just like, I'm an idiot, and, um, you know, we all change over time, finally decide to look outside our box and end up finding out that, you know, certain things ultimately don't really, uh, you know, we're, we're looking at it from the wrong way kind of thing, so. Everyone is able to grow and change, I think. I think most people who think that way are because of family tradition, echo chambers, the second they break out. Exactly, exactly. I, I like to think that everyone can change. Um, I realize that's not probably totally true. A lot of people will just stay stuck in there stuck in their box, as it were, as far as um, their unrelenting uh, viewpoints um, for certain things. It's just like, if you actually, like, when and talk to the people that you're, that you are, you know, just so vehemently against, you'd realize that, hey, they're just people trying to live their life. And you don't really need to do anything about it, you know? Just let them live their life. It, it, it's, it really comes down to it's a learning exercise of they need to actually just, again, like, talking to people is the easiest thing in the world. And just, I really think that if 
they would just talk to each other, they would realize, hey, these are just people. <laughs> um, and as the only one in the house who thinks that way anymore, my mom started ch changing away a bit in 2018, no idea. Thanks, yeah. Yeah, like I said, it's, you know, I think people can grow and change. Um, just, it may take more effort for some people. My mom is still straight against trans and homosexuality, but she keeps it to herself, and is kind of people that are, so I guess, progress. It's at least something. It, you know, at least not being outwardly bigoted is a much better improvement than, than you know, shouting at trans people or, or, uh, or gay people and stuff like that. It's just like, you can just keep it to yourself. That works too. <laughs> you know, it, it's one of those things where, I, like I said, I, I think it comes it comes down a lot to if you if you meet and talk to those kind of people, then it it does a lot of work of realizing that it's not the big deal that you think it is, kind of thing. Like, uh, for, for as much as, you know, I, I have been supportive of, of trans people, um, it's, it's always been a situation of I didn't fully understand their situation either. Um, that got way easier once it became more accepted and, um, you know, I had, uh, several friends that came out as trans, my partner uh, came out as trans partway through our relationship, so um, that kind of stuff really, like, made, you know, it, it made me go from being, you know, generally supportive to being like, okay, now I, I am I'm actually experiencing your plight, at least through you, even though I'm, I'm not trans myself, so, like, you know, I, I won't ever fully understands everything, but I at least feel like I'm in a better situation of being able to understand better, you know? Exactly, exactly. Oops, I keep hitting this foot. That's, you know what, that's fine. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's very much like I, yeah, like you said, you know, it went from being general support to, yes, like, I will fight for you because you are important to me kind of thing. Um, yeah, like, I think the, the first person that I... that I had come out to me as trans was um, a friend of mine from... Uh, middle school uh, she uh, came out uh, as trans oh god it was probably about 2016 thereabouts and um, and she was like the first one that I had you know interacted with and it's like oh my god well and you, and you know what after the fact it was like you know this all makes a lot of sense because there was a lot of stuff in there that was just like, you know, um, just general demeanor and stuff like that. It's like, okay, you know what? In hindsight, this makes a lot of sense. Um, 
and she is much, much happier now, which is great. Um, I'm going to DM you my, my anime list link if you want to check out some of the ones I've seen. The majority of them are self-select for romantic comedy. Cool. Yeah, I'll take a look at it. it is <laughs> so I'll have to check that out after stream god trying to get some of these spots in this a little difficult all right I think I got that as good as I'm gonna get it not sure if you've used the site before I have not uh, but the score is my own review score, not the total score for the animes. Gotcha. Okay. That's good to know. I will have to check some of them out. I'm always willing to watch some more anime, that is for sure. Heck, the only reason I ended up ever getting into anime was because my friend kept bugging me about watching some anime. And I was like, eh, it's not really my thing. This is, you know, I hadn't watched any yet, so it's kind of hard to go. This isn't my thing when I haven't actually watched any of it, so. I went on his recommendations and ended up watching Cowboy Bebop and went, oh, oh, this is really good. Hey, do you have any other recommendations for me? And he gave me, like, a list. So, ended up watching a lot of the stuff that he recommended, which, um, Wolf's Reign was one of those that, uh, that he had recommended to me. And I gotta say, when it first started, I was not really into it. Um, but over time, that show... Uh, really, really got to me. It was a very, very good show. Um, but, like, I was watching episodes, and I was, you know, talking to him after I watched episodes, just like, I don't know, man, like, this isn't really grabbing me. He's like, oh, and he, he started to feel like, oh, no, I may have made a bad recommendation here, but by the end of that show, like, it was severely affecting. Like, it was, it was a very, very good show, but it's... It, it made me cry. <laughs> like, it was, it was very good. Um, I'd avoid Oremo, though. I won't spoil in case you do, but it very suddenly turned... Oh, God. Oh, no. <laughs> uh, Toradora made me cry, like, multiple times. Well, good to know. Like, I, I am certainly not one to cry at the drop of a hat. Um, it takes, like, some really, really good story to kind of make me cry. Um, but, like, Wolf's Rain did that for me. Um, like I said, the... It's either the second to last or third to last episode of Cowboy Bebop. Um, at the very end of it, like, hit me really hard and I was just bawling my eyes out and like I said if I hear the song from that part of the episode now like it will make me tear up um but yeah it's uh any anime that has the Wi-Fi signal tower like icon on my list you can watch directly on anime list site Oh, cool. That's nice. Yeah, outside of anime, like there's there's a few other things that will that will make me cry my eyes out. Um, it's not extensive, but like um, Guardians of the Galaxy Volume Two, the ending of that. Good God. 
any time I watch that movie, if I get to the end of it, like, I am crying so hard at the end of it. stuff that isn't quite finished on this model. If I don't hit it, it's gonna really show up. There we go. Uh, I never cry. I think Toradora is the only show that did it to me. Well, it's good to know. That's gonna probably mean that I'm going to cry then, so... <laughs> thing is more slice of life romantic comedy stuff but I would certainly say um, I would certainly recommend Cowboy Bebop to you um, it, it's not that style but um, it is a damn good show um, I love the topic full of this stream work code vein privacy software ad block Separation Church and State anime. Yeah, we cover basically everything here. I will go back and forth between topics pretty easily. <laughs> Separa separation of Church and anime, exactly. That's how it works. You, you gotta make sure that you don't have any anime in church. The two cannot meet. This is a very small area that is hard to get paint into. Uh, if you want a heartbreaking anime, Macross Frontier is on my list. Or on my list is the only one that deviates from my usual. Okay. Now, I'm assuming. I do not need to have seen any of the other Macross shows in order to watch that one. That is that has always been my thing with with Macross was you know, all Macrosses are different stories set in the same universe. Gotcha. Okay. I mean, they all have some heartbreaking stuff, but Macross is that related. Gotcha. Okay. Um. Yeah, that was, that's always been my um, thing with not watching Macross was I was like, there's a ton of them, and I don't know if I need to have watched any of the other ones in order to start into them, so that's good to know. All of this is reminding me that I need to go and watch the um, Evangelion films that have come out um, because I watched the original anime but I haven't watched any of the movies that they did after the fact so it is something I need to get into eventually um, at least I assume Frontier I didn't feel like I was missing anything well that's good may have to give it a shot then The only anime in my list you would have to watch 
gotcha. Okay. Well, that makes sense. Okay, so I think... Actually, you know what? I did miss... Where is it? Metal Gray. Because there is a spot right... God, I don't even know if this is going to show up on camera because it's such a small detail that it's really hard to see on this. But right here, there's a little spot that is missing some paint, so I need to go through and do that. And I only saw it because the light hit it just right. There we go. There we go. That's... This is looking not much better now. Cool. What do you use to watch anime on, by the way? I use Anime Planet and my anime list. Both have deals where you can watch the anime for free, but they give ad revenue to the producers. I would use Crunchyroll, but I hate subscriptions. Can't blame you on Crunchyroll for subscriptions. Um, I generally just watch media that I buy. So, like, I, if I um, want to watch an anime, I will generally um, buy like the Blu-rays or DVDs for it. So, um, or like you originally watched or go on Netflix. Yeah. If they pop up on some of the streaming services that I, that I, uh, subscribe to, then I will watch them on that. But yeah, in general, uh, I, in general, I tend to buy the, um, the Blu-rays, um, watch some stuff on subscriptions um, and subscription services um, but not in general kind of thing um, if you watch that one I highly recommend the subs instead of the dubs the dubs are okay but they over exaggerate in some scenes and get a little too loud sometimes yeah and in general I'm very much a I watch the uh, subtitled ones as opposed to listening to the uh, English dubs. Um, granted, that didn't always used to be the case for me. I when I first watched um, when I watched Cowboy Bebop and when I watched um, Samurai Champloo, um, both of those I watched the dubbed version, which um, they were fine. Um, and it kind of got into some funny situations where um, a lot, you know, the English voice actor world for anime is very, um, <laughs> it's very small. So, like, I heard a lot of the same voices, and it's like, hey, I, I've, I've heard this person before, and especially with Sham Samurai Champloo, um, it was a situation of one of the main characters on that show is voiced by the same guy who did the voice of Spike Spiegel in the Cowboy Bebop uh, English dub. <laughs> and then a one-off bad guy character in Samurai Champloo was voiced uh, by the same guy who did the voice of Jet in Cowboy Bebop. So this is just like, it's a very small world for uh, these English voices... <laughs> Um, I have no idea if Toradora Blu-rays have subtitles. It is expensive to get via disc version, but if you do get the OVA episode and the SOS miniseries, it costs. Ho, 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 ho. Ho. Well, uh, I, I will see if I can watch it through something that doesn't require that much money down. Oh, boy. Um, <laughs> God. That's really costly. Hmm. 
Good golly. 100 to 130 to get the discs. I, I don't think I've ever paid that much for anime discs before. That is crazy. Are they like imports or something? Uh, the OB episodes in the SOS series can be acquired through various means, but having watched them, I'm not missing out on much of them. They're just extra, not additions. Yeah, import from Japan. Okay, that makes that makes more sense. Um, yeah, wow, that's nuts. I didn't even spend that much money on import hardware for like the. Um, old systems that I have, like, they were, oh, I see why, why, okay, you see why they're so expensive? You, you've got me curious. <laughs> it was limited edition, okay, that makes sense. Still don't necessarily agree with it, but yeah, that at least makes more sense. <laughs> Let's try to do a lightened up black for doing the uh, tops of things. See some around $85 on eBay too. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's better, I guess. It's still, that's that's it's quite the chunk of change to to get those. Yow. Although I say this and I've probably spent probably spent close to that buying Cowboy Bebop, but that's because I bought Cowboy Bebop over and over and over again because I'm an idiot. And um, when I originally bought Cowboy Bebop, they were... Um, <laughs> when I originally bought the Cowboy Bebop discs, they were DVDs, and then I bought found out they made the 5.1 surround sound um, version of Cowboy Bebop on DVD, so I bought those discs individually because they didn't sell them in a box. And then I found out that they came out with a Blu-ray of Cowboy Bebop with 5.1 surround, or it might be 7.1 regardless. Um, it was just like, I bought it again, and it's just like, I... I have so many discs of Cowboy Bebop now. Um, six discs of volume, so you can buy them separate as you watch two to spread out the cost out. I'm dying so hard right now. I'm gonna send you a screenshot in DM so you can see anything wrong with it. Uh oh. <laughs> I'll have to check it out after stream. <laughs> Um, yeah, it's not 
I mean, maybe they got it legit from a library, but hell of a thing to list on eBay. <laughs> All right, let's start hitting this and get it to have some lighter spots on the model. Sorry if I'm not talking a ton right now. I'm kind of like getting into the zone as I'm doing this. Sudden need of a DVD or 
BMW. I can't find one laying around. Oh, an actual like disc disc, yeah. I still have a spindle, but I haven't like touched them in forever. <laughs> I haven't had to burn a disc in a very long time. Um, but I, I do feel your pain. I've, I've definitely been in situations before where it's like, I need to burn something and I do not have a disc lying around. discs. Yep, understandable. Yeah, um, it's not a really good way of getting around that. Outside of, like, repurposing a USB drive, like, that's about the only thing I can think of for uh, doing what you need to do, but I don't know why. Uh, I don't know what you're using the thing for, so I don't know if a USB drive will cut the mustard, you know? Why do CDs suck at their only purpose? <laughs> eh, well, it's a, it was a thing of the time. Um, they work surprisingly well for some things, but yeah. <laughs> It's, uh, it's definitely a situation of trying to put videos on a disc to be able to watch on TVs easily. Gotcha. Yeah, there's no... Yeah, like, if you don't want to use two discs, like, you're probably going to have to wait and get a... Uh, get, like, a couple DVD-Rs in, but... suck to have to wait for that or try going to a store but even then like I don't know how many stores sell physical media at this point either really hard to get around that data size limitation like there are certainly ways of getting around certain things but it's mostly unsupported and you're not within that window of you might be able to fit it on kind of thing because like you can overburn on cds but i don't think you have the uh I don't think you have that kind of wiggle room with a 1.1 gig. <laughs> um, maybe I can just make my Raspberry Pi a Plex server, which is way overkill. Well, wait, t can TVs play videos from flash drives and be controlled via menu from a remote? Depends on the TV. And it depends on the media format as well. Um, my guess is a TV will probably support an MP4. Format. I doubt it's going to support an MKV format. Um, but you might be able to, if, if the files are MP4, it might work. It's worth a shot, at least. The worst that happens is it doesn't work.
Wait, VLC can convert MK to MV4. Yep. Can do that, or um, if you've got uh, FFmpeg, FFmpeg can do that too. Although FFmpeg is much more complicated. Um, I wouldn't recommend it generally to people, but um, for you, I'm, I'm sure you'd be able to figure it out. But that's only because <laughs> you like digging down into the into the command line and stuff like that, so I'm sure you'd be fine doing it. But like I use uh, FFmpeg a lot for doing uh, conversions and uh, less for conversions and more for um, concatenating and splitting stuff. So like I have I basically all my all my um, physical media I back up and I run it through um, Cody Media Center um but some things that I end up ripping down when I go to look at how um, the database wants to list it, some things it wants, it thinks episodes are actually separate or certain episodes are actually joined together into one episode. So it all depends on how, like, TVDB wants to list it. Plus, I've had to concatenate certain things together for like, um, because I have the Blu rays of the Lord of the Rings movies, and for the extended versions, um, they actually separate the movie out onto two discs. So I've had to go through and use FFmpeg to concatenate the video files together into one. I always use VLC, but I keep remembering that it's not popular because it's the best tool, but because it was the first player to include great codec support. Yep, I still use it pretty extensively because it just works out of the box for pretty much everything. So. Support which sucks for playing anime as they have both dialogue and on text of what they're reading. Oh, okay, I see what you're saying. Yeah, um, I've never really thought about that, but yeah. Generally, um, the stuff I've seen that's had the on screen representation of the text. Yeah. Yeah, I can see that being a problem. I, it's not something I ever thought of before, but yeah. You know what? I think we might be done. Well, I'm done as far as what I'm able to do on the stream for this because. I am probably going to go through... Well, I still need to do the lower edge, but that's not something that really needs to be done on the stream. Um, but what I'm going to do is uh, I will go through and do a wash on the base to try to deaden the colors a little bit, make it look more... Um, 
worn in kind of thing. And then after that, I'll do the edge of the base. And then I just gotta do the, um, then I just gotta do the clear coat and this will all be finished. So all in all, I think that's looking pretty good for right now. We just gotta do a little bit of extra work to get it to uh, finish up. Uh, yeah, when the subtitles come in, the separate files, it has issues. Oh, okay. Oh, you're actually like getting the SRT files and stuff like that? I had bought a mini HDMI for my Raspberry Pi because I did a dumb and thought the micro SD card slot was a mini HDMI port. Ah. It is not. <laughs> But yeah, no, I can see that mistake happening. <sighs> All right. Well, I think that I am going to call it a night for right now. Because um, like I said, I'll, I'll probably just do the wash off stream because I don't have any of the equipment to do the wash right now. And it's not super interesting to watch me do that anyway. So... It's not even worth really doing on stream. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, um, had a lot of fun, and uh, glad you enjoyed it. And uh, we'll be looking forward to uh, playing some more Gravity Rush 2 tomorrow. So make some progress in that. See how that goes. Uh, but until then, I hope you have a good rest of your day. And I uh, hope you stay safe out there. And looking forward to catching you later. All right? Well, have a good one. Yeah, I hope you're awake for it too. But if you're not, there's always the VODs, so don't worry about it too much if you can't make it. But always happy to see you regardless. But yeah, anyway, hope you have a good one. Stay safe out there, and uh, catch you later. Bye.